Hello and welcome back to Automotive Tales. On today's episode, we're going to talk about all the things that are wrong with our Audi A6 C6 third generation facelift. Yep, so this is definitely due. Um, it's the end of March. first of the day other than looking cool with my aviators on because we've actually got some sunshine um is to drop the car off at our local volkswagen audi specialist s line so there's a few things that we're already aware about and mentioned in the previous video about the washer bottle that leaks the rear brake light up here somewhere that doesn't function and gives you an error message on the dashboard and the cooling fan is always running whether the car is hot or cold um so there's something going on there i think Probably a temperature sender has gone and somebody has shorted it out, so it just runs all the time. Uh, it never overheats, but it does get cold when you're sitting in traffic, which is slightly annoying. Uh, they're also going to check over for bushes, bearings, all sorts of other stuff it might need doing, so that we know what we've let ourselves in for. Right, time to hand over the keys and see what happens when they service the car. A few moments later... Okay, sit rep on the Audi S-Line have been in touch to give me a list of things they're going to try and get done today before we go and pick up the car. And before you say, yes, I am wearing a scarf indoors because I'm a Yorkshireman and I'm tight. I'm not putting the heating on at this time of the year. First things first, the front tyres are shot. I sort of knew this, but I wasn't going to replace them until we got a bit of a clean bill of health on the rest of the car, which it has pretty much got. So tyres definitely doing... Uh, the other thing that needs doing is the rear brakes need doing, so um, they've definitely got a bit crusty. There's a little bit of life left in the pad, but the discs are looking crusty. Generally speaking, these big heavy cars, unless they're loaded at the back, they tend to put a lot of effort on the front brakes. The rears don't do a great deal and just get a bit tatty and horrible. So we're going to get those replaced. We think we know what the fan problem is, so it actually looks like it's the AC fan that's stuck on. Um, apparently it's a fairly common problem with this age of Audi and it's a pressure switch in the AC system. So they're gonna replace that, see if that fixes the problem. Uh, and then it's obviously having its general service. Uh, they're also gonna look at that rear brake light. Um, so they've got the unit out, they're just in the process of testing whether they're getting any power to it. Uh, if not, it might be the rear unit that's failed or it could be a wiring issue. So we're still waiting to hear on that. Um, but yeah, some good progress and probably a fairly hefty bill when we go pick up the car. But if it means the car is fit for the next couple of years of motoring, then totally worth it. Uh, right, uh, hopefully next time you see me, we'll be back at S-Line picking up the car. <sighs> Continuity is running very well here. Okay, so how did the Audi get on at the garage? Well, I have the uh, information here. I have the receipt and the bill. It's cost us a total of £843.97 to get it through its service. So it wasn't all service items, so to speak. So it had its normal service, oil filter, oil, air filter, pollen filter, etc. A new sump plug and washer. However, <clears throat> it's also had rear discs and pads. Um, so what were they? They were sort of £80 plus £30, so it was £110 there. Had a new set of tyres, so that was £219 plus fitting. Um, because the two front tyres were knackered. I knew that, didn't want to replace them until we'd had it serviced to make sure there was no other major problems. And they looked into that fan running on. So the fan running on wasn't actually what we thought it was. It wasn't the radiator fan, it was actually the AC fan. Uh, and that was because there was a faulty sender. So they replaced the sender with a new seal, regats the system, and all of a sudden the fan isn't running all the time. The car still comes up to temperature, it doesn't overheat, AC system works, excellent. And then the last problem was the brake light. So we couldn't get the brake light at the rear high level one to work. Um, they've had the boot in pieces. Uh, they've replaced a connector that was corroded. That still doesn't solve the problem. So uh, we've got the car back. We're going to have to send it back in after Easter for them to do some wiring tracing. There's probably a damaged wire between the ECU at the front and the connector at the back. So probably just run a new wire through and be done with it. Uh, and then that's it. That's the Audi looking pretty good. So the next thing we've got to do is try and find somebody who can paint the bonnet. And then it will be quite a smart Audi A6. OK, so that's out of the way. Next thing is, uh, well, we're on to clearing some more of HQ 1.0. So we still have the original workshop. I still haven't moved everything over because, as you've noticed, there hasn't been an update on the garage for a little while. So uh, next stop is going to be going back over there, clearing some stuff out and bringing it over here, probably just making a mess everywhere as usual. Progress is slow as always. Well, can you believe it for once? The sun is actually shining in the UK. So we're straight on the case and um, 
yes, our new Audi A6 has been pressed into service after its uh, light repairs uh, to start moving the old HQ to the new HQ. It's amazing we can do with a few pairs of hands. So that's one corner clear, um, but now we're going to fill it back with stuff because my brother is going to use this space. This is an X5 being used properly. It's dirty and it's full of tools. That's what we like to see. So we have one scissor lift from HQ2.0, 2 1.0, that needs to go into there so that we can get it to HQ2.0. So I'm going to do the only thing that I'm really any good at doing, and that's, um, well, I'm going to film it. lift loaded and the time lapse made that look super easy it was not and then we've got to figure out we're getting it off at the other side which is going to be interesting but uh, you know that's a problem for you know an hour future me well them because i'm useless they've done most of the hard work and just like that lift's gone 10 years worth of messing on cars as you can probably tell yeah and it's it we're pretty much out a few health and safety violations later and just like that we have the scissor lift it is in it's not currently plugged in i have tested it it does work it's all plumbed in correctly but you can see the uh, hydraulic lines here need a little bit of sorting out so they're not in the way but it is in approximately the right place in my first bay which is going to be my working on cars bay um and as i started to clear out the workshop um <laughs> can't use the four post lifts at the moment because pretty much every inch of space underneath the four post lift is you know full of stuff um, but so what I'm going to have to do is <laughs> finish building my workbench so that I've actually got somewhere to store all of this lot. And while we're on the subject of the workshop, a little update for you. So you can see I've now got some of the cupboard doors on the cupboards under the workbench. Uh, the power is still going in. That's a slow process because I've got to run a ring main all the way around this room. And then I've got to get the lights up. And I think, yeah, one and whoop, where's number two? Number two up there. So the light units are in. I've not done the wiring for those yet. I've got to figure out how I'm going to do all of that because I've got a switch by the big barn door here, which I may or may not use fairly regularly, and then a switch by the entrance to where the cars are stored over here. I've also had a delivery from Debenhams of all places. So we found Debenhams selling workshop kits. So hold on a second. These four boxes here are full of, um, they're like pin boards with uh, Linbin boxes. So I can put tools, have like a shadow wall on uh, on the back of the workbench and hang all the useful things you might need, like washers and nuts and bolts and things like that. Who would have thought Debenhams is the place to go for workshop stuff? Very strange. It's a very online sales platform now. It doesn't really have any shops, but yeah, quite shocked by that. So that's quite cool. Those will arrive today, the day. Uh, and that's it for this episode. Join us next time when we are actually going to breathe some life back into Pass the Picasso. So we have not forgotten about Pass. She is here. In fact, she's just there. Um, yeah, we're going to actually give you an update on what we've been doing with it. Right, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>